Hello and welcome to episode 16 of Grunch Music, the, the podcast where music comes secondarily. We're just here for the ad reads. My name is Lance, and as always, I'm joined by two of my closest friends in the world. First up, one man's trash is another man's treasure. It's Lucas the Rat Hoarder. Lucas, how are you doing? <coughs> I forgot that I could burp on command. I'm going to start doing that more. Yeah, that's a cool thing. That's a cool talent. You should definitely do that more. Yeah. Next up, he has a rare genetic disease that makes Parmesan cheese smell like vomit. It's Matthew slash Ross slash a garlic lord. How are you doing, Matthew? Is that a reference to something? <laughs> I don't you know. Mean, it's a reference to the fact that you don't put any fucking Parmesan in your spaghetti because you're crazy. True. You're no, a yeah. fucking no. lunatic. Dude, I don't like Parm. Dude, I don't know. You're does literally it, Italian. How does do you it not smell like, like Parmesan vomit to you? cheese on I don't know, spaghetti? Because some people know. think Parmesan cheese smells like vomit because they both contain the same acid. I thought oh, that was so, really? no, oh wait, I'm thinking yeah. I'm thinking of cilantro and soap. That's the other thing. I have that cilantro and soap, dude. I, I don't have get that, that at all. Anyways, this week we listened to Chinese Football by Chinese Football. This is my choice for the album. Lucas, how did you feel about this album? Sounds fucking boring, Lance. It was fucking like it's just really boring. I didn't find it that but how about you, Matthew? How did you find it boring? Uh, um I it's like weird, right? Because I'm kinda like like rustling, wrestling, wrestling with the album here. Um, part of me feels like a lot of it, a big chunk of it, just sounded like that one song on Spiderland. <laughs> if you know it, what? it was like the same. It felt like the same guitar chords, like over and over again on on certain portions of the album. I think you're talking about the uh, the one that Lucas likes, right? So like it was Don a really slow song. This is Mon, nothing yeah. like Don Amon. None of these songs are anything like Don Amon. I think it was like maybe it's the first song on the album. I don't know. Any, anywho, no, not a single um, song on this album even remotely resembles. Lucas, I resent that you call this album boring when you picked Apex Twins, like a two and a half hour long album, <laughs> and you picked hey, fucking The Fragile. Just, like, what the fuck, dude? Just because these albums are long does not make them boring. Okay? Apex just, Twins is undoubtedly the most boring album we listen to. That's pretty fucked up. I that disagree, is like hardcore. A cold, hard fact. Actually, I was looking at uh, albums to review for this week for my choice, and I looked up a list of the longest albums of all time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and <laughs> Apex Twin was on there. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like number 30. This guy's going to give us, like, To Be Kind or something <laughs> by Swans. I don't know. Anywho. There's, a, there's one album. Uh, it's called, uh, let me see. Bull of Heaven, or no, it's by Bull of Heaven, and the title is gibberish, and it's uh, 3.343 quindecillion years long. Hmm, is it a randomly generated album? No, it's just super compressed, and if you uncompress it at all and you get to the original file, it's just like one bass note, I believe. That sounds terrible. I don't want to listen to that. Yeah. Anyway, should we, should we start reviewing the album with Game Start? No, let's go backwards this time. No, I'm not gonna oh, do that. What? We're definitely starting with game <laughs> game start. Then why the fuck you ask me, Lance? Why ask for my input? I mean, are we ready to start? That's what I was implying. That, that would have been a big mix up. It's going from the, the the end in there. But yeah, game start. Um can we just first address the elephant in the room? Yeah, sure. Uh, that is the fact that uh You mean uh are you referring to blind men and an elephant? The song. Uh, or are you well, referring to Ori in the Blind song? Forest? Are you referring to that? Ooh. No. no what's, the, what's the elephant in the room, Matthew? Elephant in the room is uh I couldn't find like any reliable lyrics for for any of these songs. So I thought the the elephant in the room was that like all of these songs have no fucking lyrics on them to begin with. It, I, I, well, I don't even know. I, I I I can't find anything that like can prove it. Or I can't. What like, do you mean? You listen like, to the album. These songs have like no lyrics. They're all really like small. There's well, lyrics on them. I just don't know where to find like a, a reliable translation. This, this is an American football fan band, and that's the theme of their music. Is they have a it's lot of now. instrumentals and then few lyrics at like the middle to end. Mm. So they, they're following tradition in that in that sense. So you can't really fault them for that. I did notice that actually. Okay, that makes. Cool. Yeah, like American football songs usually start with a lot of instrumental, and then there's like sentences, and then it ends with an instrumental as well. Yeah, but I'd imagine when American football does it, it sounds good. I actually think this sounds this. better than American football. I'll go on a limb and say that. <laughs> really? I do. I think it sounds really good. I like this album, you, especially the first like few songs. This, dude? Let's talk about the first song. What do you like about this song? Uh, Game Star is not the greatest 
I, I like really? I think it's okay. Like I, I don't think it's bad. I it's think not, it's actually it's not like one of my really, favorites. Like, it's a nice little little cute opener. I feel I don't know. I it's, agree. It's it very, is. It is fine. It's, it's definitely fine. It, it pulled me in. That's for sure. It definitely pulled me in. I actually. I, I would consider it one of the better songs in this album. I don't like a lot of songs in this album, and I think it's pretty catchy. Yeah, I actually really like Game Story. It's, it like surprisingly, even though it's only two minutes, it doesn't really stay for that long compared to the other songs in the album. But I really I don't, quite like it. I don't think I would have liked it if it wasn't the first song on the album. I think that like I gotta keep pushing this, dude. The main thing I hate about this album is that like literally, it's mostly instrumentals, and all the instrumentals sound like insanely fucking similar from song to song. Okay, at but, least like, I, don't... I think this one's catchy, and it's the first one, so I'm a fan. Yeah. I think I would disagree with them sounding similar. I think a lot of them, like they have, they're both, they're all emo songs. So maybe like that's what you're picking up on. But like, perhaps in in the genre of emo, they sound pretty dissimilar from each other, in my opinion. I just don't think they're doing a lot of interesting things, like the guitar and shit. I just think like, I don't know. Let's just let's let's go song by song. Perhaps Game Star. I feel like this is covered. We go into Goalkeeper. Now I like this song a lot, although it is a little bit bread and butter compared to the rest of the album. It's their most popular song as well, I believe. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I, I didn't have a problem with Goalkeeper. Uh, Just the one with like the, the like weird backwards guitar notes, right? <laughs> like the uh I have no the idea. ones where like they're recorded forwards and then they, they edited them to be backwards and then they put them in as an effect. Pardon me? Possibly, I don't know. I didn't pick up yeah. on that. This song was kinda interesting. It wasn't terrible. Then we go into Flying Fish. Now this might be my favorite one. I think it's really good. Really? Yeah. Okay. Especially like the beginning. Like, this is like, this is an interesting guitar on this song for sure. That's fair. That's I don't know. Maybe I've just been listening to too much of this type of music. Maybe or too little. How, uh, too little. Could be that. Could be that. Because I've listened to some real like... garbage emo music. Really have, and this is not one of them. I feel like the uh, okay. You are the you are the resident emo expert on this podcast, Lance. It's got to be. It's got to be said here. Kind of. That is true. I mean, you're like a Blink-182 fan. Blink-182 isn't emo, dude. They're pop punk. Eh, same shit, dude. Smile. Same shit. <clears throat> um, what I will say is... I, I, think, I think Lance had a really good word for... What was it? The, I, think it was, I think it was the ASAP Rocky album. This feels like a really good um, album. Like You can just kind of listen. You can put in the background and just kind of do things, too. I definitely agree with that. I it's, also it's, actually would agree with that. I think that's probably the best way to listen to this album. Because what I did to listen to this, well, I, I was listening and I was like, oh my god, it's like an hour long attention span. Ugh, I can't understand the lyrics. I started doing like <laughs> work to this album. Like actually like housework. I'm like, damn, it's actually like not bad for doing a little bit of housework here and here, doing some chores and some other stuff. That's pretty good. So you're saying the less you pay attention to the album, the better it is. <laughs> uh, take. I mean, if you, want, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, sure. Anything um, else on Flying Fish, Lance? Uh, it's a little bit long. Like I feel like the, be- the beginning is really good, and then it just keeps it going. I think it's a little bit too long. I think this is where it, I kind of go into the to the into a lull of just not paying attention to the album for a little bit. So I had that as well. Ooh. It starts I had that as well for this like next the song. This is album. another one of my favorites. Four hundred meters. I think this uh, album starts very strong. God damn, Lance. Yo, Lucas, you remember this song? Do I? <laughs> do, do you? I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> do I like this song, guys. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Know what happened. We're diverting. I, I, I listen to it, but I'm just like, I, I, like I, I can't like really, I can't pick up on anything that felt like memorable on it. They have like the same uh, like guitar progression, and I think it's singing as well. It's hard to hard to recall exactly because it's in a different yeah. language. And then, like halfway yes. through, they do the same thing, but it gets like more amped up. And I like it yeah. a lot. Yeah. It's like a, a nice refreshment. I'm wondering if, if the language boost. barrier proved to be an issue on ter- in terms of memorizing or trying to differentiate between songs here. So, how do you guys feel so, about the uh, Chinese language as a poetic art form in comparison to like Korean, <laughs> like we listen to with BTS? 
Do you think it can? Do you, do you, think it cuts do you expect it? me to answer that question, Lance? What do you mean? This is. I've, I was thinking about this the whole time when I was listening to this album, guys. No fucking shit about Chinese. I don't, think, I don't even know. I don't even know if this is Mandarin or fucking Cantonese. Please. I don't even know what dialect this is, bro. <laughs> I don't know anything about Chinese. I, I was like, compared like, like compared to like uh, Korean. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's better or worse. I think it's are, pretty. Are, I think it has some advantages and some disadvantages. Like, <laughs> like sometimes what? it sounds better what than Korean, know? and sometimes it sounds worse. True. Because at first True. I didn't like it. <laughs> at first I wasn't liking the singing, but then it got to me. I, I I think it was done tactfully. Was that due to the Chinese language, or was it due to the singer? Uh, I don't think the singer is that good, honestly. So I guess the Chinese <laughs> language. Damn. Are you, are you trying to like say like it, it's like the different sort of. Uh... I don't know. I don't have know you ever listened it. to like a French song? They're like it sounds like shit, kind of, because it's in French, and then it's like the it it doesn't bro, sound very like, poetic. Uh, who's, who's that one black guy? Stromae. Stromae. You don't like Stromae, bro? No, I don't like that guy. I don't know who that is. Uh, really? Well, I know what we're reviewing uh, on Ross's. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> then we go into number ten jersey, not for anybody. <laughs> Oh yeah, so like, what the fuck does the, the the football theme mean? Is this all like, did it did it? Do you know anything about American football, Lance? Like, are you familiar the with the band? Them? Yeah, yeah, I, I've listened to like all their albums. I think. Okay, it was it was like the football theme like prominent on American football? Was there no, like they don't have any? I don't think they have all? any songs named after football. Because like the whole fucking song is the whole album is about fucking football. I kind of like it though. It, we at least have. Well, exactly about soccer specifically. We got to specify. How about flying fish? How does that relate to soccer? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Jamie, pull up the genius translated Chinese lyrics. How about blind men and an elephant? Where's the soccer reference there? <laughs> uh, referees. True. Got him. Got him. It la- Lance, look at the lyrics. For it lands next to you. That's clearly a soccer ball. That's clearly a soccer ball. <laughs> Possible. That's like it. It lands next to you is fifty percent of the lyrics of this song. Tell me, that's not about soccer. I uh, I don't know. It might be. I have no idea. I don't speak Chinese. True. Okay. What about number ten, Jersey? See, this is where I thought the album faltered a bit. This one was a bit meh for me. It does. It was. It is pretty like fast paced and edgy. But I don't know. It's all right. Yeah. I don't think it's bad. It's right. Like I think. Like these songs are definitely like background music, like Matthew was talking about. That's where they uh, are at home. Yeah, I think so. Then we go yeah, to World agree. Cup Fantasy. I think World Cup Fantasy is where I clocked back in, and I was like, "Hey, hey. this song's actually pretty good." I think this song reminds me of something, but I don't know what. I don't know. Some good I feel like that, that, like that. a lot of songs. Like, <laughs> it just felt Sorry, very dude. familiar. It's a lot of fucking indie rock. There's a lot of alt rock. There's a lot of bands that do this exact same fucking sound. Very hard to differentiate sometimes. Mm-hmm. Hard to pull from um, f- pull pull from uh, what's it called? Influences. So Matthew, this this song caught you back in. Anything specifically yeah. you like about it? I'm not <laughs> terribly sure why. Like I'm trying to think about it, I think it was just maybe a slightly slower pace. After the you know number ten jersey, and I, I think I quite like the uh, the guitar guitar uh, thingy guitar sound. <laughs> yeah, the chords, the chords. Let's go with the chords and move on. <laughs> I like the guitar sound and the chords and the chords. Then we go into game pause, but this is just an interlude to the next song, the last That's emo fine. boy on earth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a title, Lucas. You gotta admit, <laughs> <laughs> That's some anime shit right there. It's a pretty fucking anime. I think I actually like from World Cup Fantasy. I was back in this album, so, I, so I, I Ross, think... the, I'm pretty sure the lyrics for this one are pretty cut and dry. They come pre-translated on Genius. This is the one with the. They're like, in actually no. Th- sorry, this is the one that's in English. It's actually just in English. Okay. It's, she runs to me so emotional. That's the whole song. He says it like five times. <laughs> okay, I, I knew that's it. That's the lyrics for the song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it says like he sound, says so emotion every single time, but apparently yeah. it's so emotional. This one, uh, this is like a meh for me. This song, it's called Last Emo Boy, 
but it, it's like a really funky song for the rest of the songs in the album which is very confusing to me i think it might be the least emo song on the album if it's the last emo boy on earth that's why he's that the means- last emo boy dude emo's dead emo's dead everything's remnant. funky now I guess so. This song is also not named after a soccer reference. <laughs> this is not a soccer song. <laughs> that's another. That's another point in its hat. It's another uh, another letter off the Rossometer. Fun oh, fact: if you, on, remove, if you remove all of the soccer songs and play these in reverse order, it's a harsh critique of the Xi Jinping dictatorship. Ooh, you can only hope. Then we move on to red card penalty. This Back is on the soccer. This is another like this is might be the most epic song on the album. There's a lot of work put into this one. Really? I don't know if it's my favorite or anything. It just definitely has a lot of work because it it's has like multi like, stages. It changes changes a lot. There's a lot of the parts to e- it. Epic? Okay, it's either maybe I'm thinking of the another one, but it's I, I think I know what you're saying though. It's either this one or another track down the road that I really think is a qu- quite a uh, explosion of of rock. This is the and, Bohemian Rhapsody of this album, Red Card Penalty. It's almost like um like, like a post rock thing. I think in one of these songs it feels like. I don't yeah, know. would you care to elaborate further? Means. I have no idea what that means, Ross. I'm fascinated. I don't know. Like I, I was listening to some post rock. It feels very like it Which sounds post-rock? like post rock. Ah, post Malone? It's, no, no, no. It's <laughs> it's like uh you know, if you give me a second I can, I can look it up. It's the song. Postal Service? The postal service no it's like um it has like this big sort of epic guitar with a lot of uh the big epic guitar. E- epic guitar with, with a lot of uh okay I, oh yeah. dude when's the, when saw, are we gonna I get saw, can yeah. we get like the the always sunny transition the gang learns music theory because like i feel like we're just fucking retards, dude. No, we're def- we definitely are. Who but cares about want- music theory? I, I, <laughs> I just wanted to stall enough so I can get this. Okay, Departure Songs by We Lost the Sea. That's the That was the album I was listening to. Oh, the cult classic. Very cult everybody's classic. heard of. I don't know. It was like a YouTube recommendation thing. And I listened to it. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. But it has like this, I don't know, this very grand sort of, I don't know how to describe it. There's just a lot of go- lot going on. It Which feels song like, are you even talking like, about? No, it's oh. talking about a song from a different album right no, now. No, 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 You're no, clearly no. not paying attention. No, no, no. no. I'm, talk- I'm talking about I'm talking about this album, but fuck. I'm trying to explain like what I'm trying to like mean here in terms of post rock. I'm trying to like the way it, it sounded to me was like this very epic, almost clashing of of, of I guess of percussion in a way. Like it feels like there's a lot of lot of a lot of symbols that <laughs> that you can hear. Feels like a it's like an ocean crashing. Is that symbols with an S or a C? Mm, I don't know. This con- this conversation's gone off the rails. Let's go on to the next yeah. song. Hat trick. Hat trick. Uh, this is uh, this really emblemizes uh, my problem with the lyrics for this album. I feel the like this one's uniquely one, two, bad three, though, Lucas. Three, Come two, on. one. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Etc. For a period of five minutes. They say I don't know how you can compare all the lyrics on this album to this one. I feel like that's I think, unfair. I think it is. A, I think it's a trend. I think this is just the most egregious example. Hmm. Yeah, the Asian a- Asian man yelling numbers didn't really do it for me on this one, for sure. <laughs> Though I think the instrumental is fine. He also says goal at the end. It's not just numbers. Pog. Yeah. Goals, Which confirms this is a soccer song, by the way. Well, it's if called you Patrick, by the if you title. Didn't... Yeah. Then we go into Goodbye Milo. Here we go. Oh, Jesus. Milo Yiannopoulos. Now, this song, I think, is the most epic song. On, it's on definitely intense. It is extremely intense. I love it. I now, love it. Now, this song is just straight up about the surveillance state. If you yeah, look at the lyrics so. on this one. It's just "I know you're everywhere." That's the whole song. You just keep, <laughs> keep saying that. Maybe it's about a dead person looking down from heaven. You ever think about that? Nope. I'm pretty sure nope. it's about social credit. <laughs> oh boy. But uh, yeah, I, I guess everything I was trying to I- I- iterate on red card penalty. Whoops! It was supposed to be for this song. Whoops. Uh, but yeah, it's it's one of these. I, th- I think. 
God yeah, anyways, damn, I, I, I internalized all that shit you were saying on red card penalty. You're saying I gotta re-internalize it for goodbye, my loot. I, I gotta, I gotta re-spew all the all the scuffed music theory that God I just, I just damn. put out. Yeah. And, ow, jeez. Anyways, um, yeah, I'll get this song to, is I'll definitely emotional. Song. It's emo shit for sure. This one is emo shit. I gotta admit, it hits yeah, those emo like, feels. It's like better, I feel, than like the average emo song. I think that's I kind of an easy bar to hit, considering a lot I feel of emo like the music average is song of shit. any genre is probably pretty dog shit. Yeah. Hmm. We'll move on to blind men and an elephant. This is a weird one, dude. I feel like it's it gets weird. really emotional, and this song is another kind of, kind of a uh, just a bread and butter butter song. Yeah, second last song in the album. Like, Very whatever. long as well. Yeah, yeah, a lot of these fucking songs are extremely long, by the way. The average song length in this album is like five and a half minutes. Again, that's another think. like American football thing, though. Oh, is it? Yeah, they're like seven minute songs mm. usually. That's weird. They're kind of like epics, you know? Feel you. We're using that word a lot this episode. No, it's epics. a different type of epic. Yeah, but it could just be an epic theme, you know? We play some Fortnite after this and stream it. Epic uh, game store? Yeah. Epic meal time. You play? You have any thoughts on this song, Matthew? Uh, not too much, honestly. I think I think after Goodbye Emilio, I was just like, "Damn, <laughs> I want to go back to that last song." <laughs> and then we go to Game Over. Pretty traditional ending song, just like a s- slow, short, sad song to end it off. It almost feels like a like a. I mean, other than the the song title, it almost. It, like you can hear it, it almost feels like a like a like a mirror image of Game Start. It sounds mm. like a mirror image. I didn't in contrast sense. them, but that that sounds interesting, Matthew. If that's I, true, I, I compared them afterwards. And it's like okay, I can sort of see some similarity here. I can hear a similarity in in some sense. It's almost like one is a bit more, uh, I don't know, a bit more uh, happier. The other one's a bit more sadder. Yeah, I think overall this album, in some ways, exceeded my expectations and otherwise fell into them. If that makes sense. I like, agree, actually. A lot of yeah. the songs I liked, and then a lot of them were just like uh, kind of boring. But I think this band has potential. I would say that. And they do have like, they don't have other albums. They have a lot of other songs they released. Since yeah, then. I don't know. I went in with zero expectations one way or the other, and I would ju- I was just met with apathy. I just I didn't find any of this any song on this album like particularly enjoyable. This is a how emo of you me... to find something apathetic, Lucas. <laughs> Let me let me specify. This is a this is might be one of the few albums that I have not added a single liked song on Spotify to. I do not like Ooh. a single one of these songs on Even Spotify. Even Crazy Frog? <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Lucas, <laughs> Lucas is talking so much shit from a glass house, dude. It's insane. I should put some Crazy Frog on here, dude. That's actually not a bad idea. That sounds like hell on earth 2006. <laughs> There's some fire. Oh, okay, Matthew. Anyways, that's the, that's Chinese football. That is Chinese football. It's time to move on to the boop, 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 the Rossometer. Matthew, what is your rating for this album? Man, it's such a weird album to give a rating to because it, it feels like I don't know. It's almost like in some sort of weird realm where it can't be rated compared to other albums. But if I have to give Chinese, if I have to. <laughs> Okay, not in that type of way. But... Is this the first Chinese album? <laughs> is, that what you mean? is that what you mean by different realm? <laughs> no, no, I meant different realm. It's like it almost feels like I'm trying to compare like a, like a, like a movie score in some ways because it feels like it's all background music. It's like I'm 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 listening to music to do something else. I'm not actually listening to the music. I don't think like, that reflects well on this album. You don't think so? It sounds no. like an Aphex Twins criticism. <laughs> no, you listen to Aphex Twin in a dark room alone. <laughs> You listen to Apex wall. Twins when you don't have the Minecraft soundtrack available to you. <laughs> it's, when it's when you want to listen to the Minecraft soundtrack, but you're also off your schizophrenia meds. You want to have a good time. And you live in 2002 and don't have access to the internet. And 9-11 just happened. Bong, bong, True. Bong, bong, bong. Matthew. Yeah, I'm stalling here. Um, I think... If I, ha- I, I it almost feels like indifferent. So because of that, I'll just give it an RO out of Ross. Okay. Turn it here first. 
I think that's fine. I'm okay with that. It's probably what I'd expect. It's not bad. I gotta give my official Rossometer predictions before every Rossometer. <laughs> no, that, that's like influencing the vote. You have to write it down on a sheet no, no, of paper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll yeah. write it down and then afterwards I'll reveal it. Honestly, because, yeah, it, it kind of does sway, like, my vote after we talk about it. Because part of me is like, oh, because ma- Lucas like, oh, yeah, he might, like, make some really good points with this. Or Lance might make, make some really good points. Or they both make really bad points. But, yeah. All right, so you gotta steal yourself against our opinions. True. True. Anyways... How about oh. the meme archetype of this album? Oh man, I another wonder. doomer. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> You're thinking bloomer folk today, right? Can a Chinese yeah. man be a doomer? Of course. I think most Chinese men are doomers. I don't know if that's true. I think a lot of them are boomers. Yeah, but they could be doom and boomers. Isn't that Japan? No, those are all boomers. Ah. No, those are all zoomers. What? Sure. Look at the Japan population. has like the Japan. oldest population in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually true. Hundred percent <laughs> correct. Okay, so Doomer, uh, how about the songs? I guess I'll list uh, mine first. I like Goalkeeper, yeah. Flying Fish, and Four Hundred Meters. The first I three like, songs. I like uh, you, Goalkeeper is the second song. Yeah, you know what I mean though, because the first one is no, pretty short. Don't. It's an I'm intro. Goal. I like Goalkeeper. Uh, I'm willing to go with Goalkeeper. Game start. Red card penalty. Goodbye, Milu. Okay, goalkeeper it is then. Oh, okay. I thought, okay, Lucas <laughs> only likes goalkeeper? Alright, alright. Well, that's the only one we've listed two of, I think. Apparently. Yeah. Lucas, do we have an ad read today? Yes, we do, Lance. Today's sponsor is the 1940s Argentinian Tourism Board. Use promo code GRANCH to escape the justice at the Nuremberg Trials and live out your days in the South American countryside. I'll definitely With do that the next, the next time I committed genocide. Mm-hmm. With T-Pain. Of course, you need musical entertainment. Team Payne's in commission today. Darn. Couldn't make it. He's in commission? Out of commission. Maybe he's being commissioned by another podcast. Okay, Lucas, you were teasing it earlier to me. What is next week's <laughs> album? So I thought long and hard about this one, you know? Oh. I, I, went, I went a number of venues. I went longest possible albums in the world. I, I dipped my, my feet into the, the deepest layers of the Nirvana iceberg to find some fucked B-sides. I had ideas there. But ultimately, I think what we're lacking on this podcast, and what I thought we were going to get this week, but we in fact did not, a taste of the world. And a taste of, of the, the universal cultures of humanity. Which is why the album for next week is The Rough Guide to World Music. The very first compilation album in Grunge Music Podcast. I, I don't know what... What is it called? The Rough Guide to World Music. Released in 1994 by the World Music Network label. Most how, of it is in How long African, is this? 70 minutes long. Okay. What, what what songs are on it? Like, what is this thing? It's a fucking journey around the world, Lance! Okay. I thought for sure you are going to say Little Dicky Earth or something, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I thought for sure that's what, where oh, we are going here. Brain, P. Woo! <laughs> Lance, I want to torture you guys. I want to torture myself as well. Like, I like Crazy Frog. No, you don't. Don't tell me that. Fuck you, bro. I, I'm losing respect every time you say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Axel F made a better album than this. God damn. Okay, Lucas, are you ready for your question? Yes, sir. Are you able to tell the difference between Sprite and water if they're in glasses on your table in front of you? <laughs> yes. yes if, would you put mo- how much money would you bet? Probably like $5,000. What if they were both like extremely settled and there's no bubbles in the sprite and you're not allowed to sniff (laughs) i feel like it's hard dude no i can still do it i have faith in myself you think you'd have a hundred percent success rate or what yeah Hmm. what if there was like 10 glasses of water and one glass of sprite (laughs) sprite (laughs) <laughs> really fucking stacking the deck against me, <laughs> I think that it's hard, might, dude. That might be easier. That li- that actually might be easier because you could see the differences. Like, I don't think you could ever get me, dude. I think I'm fucking all the way on Sprite. I'll bet my life on it. 
I'm going enough, I think we have to do an experiment. I want to experiment. I'm down. I'm absolutely down to test this. Anyways, that concludes the podcast. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. All right. See ya. Yeah. Goodbye.